Hi everybody, Rob here again from the Department of Education at Cape Breton University. In this video, I'm going to take a quick look at how to create your own team if you want a space where you and some of your classmates can collaborate together on some of your group projects or even just to connect and provide some peer support to each other throughout your studies here at Cape Breton University. Now, once again, I'm on the line with my colleague from the CBU library, Laura Sims, and I'm going to create a group for Laura and I to collaborate in. So to do that, I just need to log into Teams and look for the Join or Create a Team button up here in the top right hand corner. You'll see that below your profile icon. So I'm going to click on Join now and I have options to create a team, join with a code or see another one that I've been invited to join here. In this case, I'm going to click on Create Team. Now you have some options. You can create this as a class, as a professional learning community, as a staff group, or as an other. So let's create this as an other, a study group. And I'm going to give this a name, my study group at CBU. I can give it a description if I want, and I can make this private or public so that anyone in the organization can join. Uh, but I'm going to leave this as private because I don't want the whole world to be able to join. It's just myself and Laura in this case. Now I'm going to hit next. It's going to start creating the team for me. The next thing I want to do is start adding people to the group. Now one way I can do that is by typing in Laura's name here and adding them to, uh, adding Laura to the group. But I'm going to skip this step for now and show you another way that you can do this. So I'm in my team. I have no team members yet. If I want to add some members to the team, I can click these three dots next to uh, the name, my study group, and I can add a member from here. I'm going to look for Laura. So I type in her name and Laura Sims comes up. I can add her to the group and simply hit add. She is now a member of the group. I can also make her an owner. In this case, I'm going to make her an owner. So Laura will have some editing rights in here and be able to set up some more stuff than just being a member of the group. And I hit close. Laura is now a member of this group. She should receive an email notification that she's been added to the group. I can click on manage the team if I want to check who's a member of this team. So I can see that myself and Laura are members of the team. Now let's say I don't know the contact information for all of my classmates who I want to join this team and work on this group project with me. Well, I can do the same thing that some of your instructors here at CBU may do, and that is give you a join code so that you can manually join the team yourself. To do that, again, I would come to these three dots next to the name of my study group, click on manage the team, which will bring me to this area and click on settings. Now that I'm under settings, I can look for this option for a team code. I click on generate. It's going to generate this unique code for me here now. I just need to copy paste this and share this with anybody who I want to join the team. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that only students uh, or faculty members who are using their Cape Breton University login credentials can join this team using a join code. You can't add people who are using their Gmail address or their Hotmail address. Now, I've got my team created. I've got a join code. It's going to eventually be more than just Laura and myself who are members of this team. We're going to be acting as the team captains. Maybe we have five or six other students in here. And uh, we're going to be working on different parts of the project. So we don't always need to be sharing information with each other all the time and meeting with the same group of people. We might want to meet with a subgroup. I can create what we call channels. You'll see already there's uh, something called a general channel here. This is your main meeting room, your main discussion area. Well, let's say we have a group of people who are going to work on creating our video presentation. I can click on the three dots. I can add a channel. And I can call this video production. And I can make this a standard channel so that anyone in the team can see it or private and just a small subgroup can join. And again, you can add members to that channel. So I'm going to leave it a standard now. Add this. 
and now my video production channel is here. Now let's say just myself and Laura as the captains of this team, the organizers of everything, want to have our own private channel that the rest of the group members can't see. Now I can add a new channel here again, and I'll call this admin. I'm going to make this a private channel this time. Click on next, and now in this case, I'm actually going to add Laura to the channel. The trick here is that Laura needs to be a member of the team first, or you cannot add her to the channel. But since Laura is a member of the team, I can add her to this channel. And now we are done. We have a private channel. You can tell it's private because it has a padlock next to it. And only members of this channel will have access to it.